this whole eight passengers thing, you guys, this whole eight passengers thing is just getting weirder. Um, oh my god, even. Today I wanted to go over the eight passengers Google Doc that Sherry had put together where a lot of people put links to clips of Ruby saying some crazy things about her children and the way she disciplines them. You need more than just the links. You actually, um, so Sherry is, I guess, the eldest daughter and um, she's trying to collect evidence for the criminal case. Um, you have to actually download the videos. You gotta download the videos. It can't just be links. Because um, I also just watched something that said that YouTube has canceled two of her channels and just like removed all the videos. Now, I don't know what their uh, document retention policy is and how long they uh, will retain those videos for a police investigation, but YouTube is some crap that way. So, um, hopefully she's getting everything she needs. And I kind of want to just, just react to those, break it down, because I feel like it's important, especially with the hindsight that we have now, to take a look at these and really, you know, look for the red flags that we all knew were already there and just kind of reflect on all of this. And if you need to be updated on what exactly is going on with Eight Passengers, Ruby Frank, Kevin Frank, Jody, then make sure you watch these two videos that I made covering them. And I also wanted to take a look at some photos that have been released on the Daily Mail. Uh, there's been a picture released of Kevin returning back to the house, as well as pictures of the houses that have been released such as Jody's house and Ruby's house. Here you can see Kevin, the husband of Mormon YouTuber Ruby Frank, was spotted at the family home on Saturday. He's believed to have been kicked out of the house last year, which from everything that we've looked at, we can confirm that he did move out and wasn't living there any longer. But you can Yeah, and the way that Child Protective Services worked, so CPS was called on them several times, the family was concerned about the situation for three years, but because he was, uh, this is my assumption, this is my assumption here, because he was separated from his wife, I don't know if they were legally separated, but they were not living together, and he had the eldest son, um, and she had the four youngest children, I think Sherry's off at college or something. Um, basically, because he wasn't directly involved in the situation, he's not going to be held legally responsible like the two ladies, because, um, he can, he can, he has plausible deniability at this point, right? Um, because he was not in the household, he did not know that two of the children were sent over to Jody's house for discipline uh, that included duct tape around their their hands and feet that included um, scratches and open wounds all over their bodies right and just wait until you see her house and see here that he is still wearing the wedding ring which is interesting, so maybe they were just taking time apart. Here you can see Ruby Frank's home, which looks to be like a normal home. Now when we get to Jody's home, it looks like it's a military base or something. Now according to Daily Mail, Kevin could be seen removing these stickers off of their van, the eight passengers YouTube stickers. And then here's the same van, but no sticker. And it looks like Kevin's moving back into the home that Ruby was staying in. He can be seen here walking in with a pillow and what looks to be like maybe his clothes or something. And this is Jody's house. Jody's home is definitely scary looking to say the least. It looks like a place that I wouldn't want to go to and it looks very concealed. Yeah, and on top of that, like it looks very detached from the rest of the community. So when you think about the 12-year-old the boy who um, snuck out the porch 
to find a neighbor. Does it look like there are any neighbors close by? How far did he have to go? How far did this kid have to go to get it? He, he wanted water and food. He wanted assistance. And um, that's why they got arrested. And 20 officers showed up with guns to um, the other one, Frankie. Probably because of the way this looked, right? Like, this looks like a fucking fortress. How close was the next neighbor's house? Like, it's like a bunker type thing. I guess maybe this is just how the houses out there look. Because you can see more in the back, back here. But it's a very private home that just gives you those eerie feelings. And something I didn't go over is something else that they... Well, it is a desert state. And um, my experience with my um, kind of relative, they're not really relatives, they're like my brother's wife's family, right? So they're, it's a little bit distant here. But they live out in Arizona, which is just south of Utah. And um, these are desert states. So they do have these sort of like metal things that come down over the windows to um, protect from the extreme heat that happens in August. And it, it was August. It was late August when this happened. It's August, September is generally the hottest time of the year. Um, so it's possible that that might be getting played up a little bit but yeah that could absolutely lock you in right that could lock you in because these are like metal things that you bring down over the windows to prevent from the heat coming into the house neighbors saw it says here neighbors told the daily mail they had been concerned about the children's well-being and once saw the kids left outside pulling weeds for hours during triple digit temperatures I can't stand being in 87 degree heat. I can imagine a child out in the heat for hours picking weeds. That is literal torture and abuse. I just came across. Yeah, seriously. As soon as it gets like over 80 degrees, I put out a bucket um, of ice water to put my ankles in it. And um, I have a dish towel that I can dip into that bucket and wipe myself down because that's crazy. But like, I do go outside quite a bit, right? Especially during the pandemic because I want fresh air. But um, you can't put little kids in situations like that. Triple digits to do chores, to do chores, for real? If that's the chore you want to have them do, why don't you have them do it in the early morning hours when it's still a little bit cooler or late at night, you know, especially because you're homeschooling these kids, apparently, right? You're apparently homeschooling them or maybe you're not. Maybe you're just torturing them all day. That when I was reading some articles and I just wanted to add that in here. But now let's take a look at this Google Doc. Now I've briefly went over this, but I'd like to take a deeper look into it. Now okay. this Google Doc has a lot of uh, links to videos and I will have it in the description down below if anybody would like to check it out. But let's just go down the list here and start where I haven't seen some things. Ruby on Connections talking about leaving minors alone so she can nap. And we lived in a townhouse and there were a lot of stairs that went up to my bedroom and the, the family room was down a long flight of stairs and I put my my two children my almost six-year-old she's probably five and then um, Chad my three almost four-year-old in the on a couch and three almost four-year-old five almost six that's very young very young to be left alone right I put on a movie and I said I am going to go lay down do not <laughs> move from your couch you, you got your blanket you've gone to I'm sorry, Ruby. Um, why are you so tired? Why are you so tired? How late do you stay up at night? 
You have young children. You need to supervise them. And you're like, I, I need to lie down. Really? Which, by the way, that's the appropriate grammar. It's not lay down, it's lie down when it's a human being. Bathroom, um, the, the doors were locked and bolted, and I said, I'm going to go lay down. I'm going to lay your sister down for a nap, uh, the baby, and I'm going to go lay down. And when I come down, uh, I will get some lunch for everybody, or a snack, or whatever it was. So they were fed, they were full, they were emptied, and, and so I thought, okay, everything's good. And I made it very clear. I said, do not under any circumstance go into the kitchen do not do not go into the kitchen you just stay right there and watch the movie for an hour and i went upstairs and laid down and an hour later i came downstairs and the movie was still going and they were sitting on the couch and they were cuddled in their blankets i thought oh good they did what they were told oh i'm so glad i'm so relieved okay so i went into the kitchen to start preparing some food and as i walked on the floor my feet went they, they stuck they stuck I'm like my foot is stuck to the floor and as I lifted my foot up off the floor it went like you could you could hear the stickiness I could hear it with my ears I thought oh my gosh what is on this floor and I took another step and my foot stuck and went like it was like sticking on the floor and I thought what is this so I did what any mother would do you, you know what I'm gonna say young moms <laughs> I knelt down on the floor and I smelt it and I couldn't I couldn't quite tell and I <laughs> stuck my tongue out and I licked the floor I'm like oh. and I licked the floor I'm like what the heck Yo. yeah seriously like I mean first of all when you live in a house with children or even just like by yourself sometimes you find sticky stuff on the floor and you're like oh how'd that get there really this is your response to it is you fucking lick the floor because you're trying to set up your children for discipline like, literally, God, dude, just mop it up. What the hell even? How do you even know they did it? How do you know you didn't do it? How do you know you didn't, like, obviously, like, you're taking naps in the early morning while your kids are watching a movie. Are you a drinker, girlfriend? Did you spill one of your drinks? Well, she there was an unknown substance on the ground and she gets on her hands and knees and licks it like what and it's funny because she's trying to relate with people she's like i know mothers out there you know what i'm about to say anytime there's a weird substance on the floor you lick it you just yeah, lick right. it because that's just what you do that's what us mothers do i don't think that's how we do mothers do that right <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong but you're not gonna just lick some random substance that's on the floor are you I don't think so. This is, this is pineapple juice. What in the world? How, how, how did pineapple juice get on the floor? And everywhere I walked, my foot stuck to the floor. And I thought, what? What? How? How? Was there some rum or vodka mixed in with it, huh, girlfriend? <laughs> I'm trying to put the pieces together. Like, what happened? So I called my two kids and I said, I said, come here. And they came over and I said, do you guys know why this floor is sticky? No. No, no, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, this floor was absolutely clean before I went upstairs. I went upstairs for an hour and I came down and now it is covered, covered. There is something that's going on. And one of you or both of you know something and you're not telling me. And I'm going to stand here and tell you do. Why? And my son do you ever notice how she's always smiling when she gets into these like power stances yeah, where she, she is in a position where she's telling about herself basically being more powerful than the other person like i've got control here you don't and this is me and i'm gonna win you're, you're not gonna win this situation and she's like proud of how she is an authority figure over these children and yeah she's a sadist She's absolutely a sadist. And taking advantage of them and abusing them. And said, um, I know, I know why it's sticky. I said, oh, and why is that? Well, um, I thought I cleaned it up, but I guess I didn't. Him saying this in his, you know, three or four year old vocabulary. Oh my God. He showed me that in the fridge, there was a big Tupperware of pineapple. 
pineapple with some juice in it. And he said, I went into the kitchen and I got the Tupperware pineapple and I opened it to get some pineapple and it spilled and went everywhere. And I hurried and picked up all the pieces of pineapple and then he, he showed me, he said, I got a paper towel and I cleaned up all of the mess and put the lid on and put it in the fridge so it it, it didn't look like there was anything wrong. Well, you as anybody, anybody older than four years old knows that if you have pineapple juice and you take a paper towel and you soak up the pineapple juice, you don't, you're not actually cleaning the pineapple juice. You're just making it look like there's no pineapple juice. And so. Right. Anybody who's that young would totally know that. Totally know that. Right. Um, maybe your lazy ass bitch self shouldn't have been taking a nap in the morning. Maybe you should have left some snacks out for them so that they didn't have the need to go into the kitchen. What the hell even with this chick? I, I looked at him. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if everybody knows that that's older than four. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. It's kind of weird how she like is putting down her child too with her vocabulary here. And here's where the compassion comes in. And I hope that you can oh. hear it. I said, I, that, that's a good thing that you told me that what you have done and you didn't clean it up. You didn't actually clean it up. And that was dishonest. So I'm, I'm telling him the truth. You said you would not go into the kitchen and you did. I told you under no circumstance are you to get off the couch and you did. And I told you I would be feeding you as soon as I come down and you felt entitled to go take, you felt entitled to take what was in the fridge and eat it. And then you made a mess and then you tried hiding it by lying. Isn't the whole point of being a child to explore and make messes so yes. you can learn? You got to be given that freedom to explore and try things for yourself to see what would happen or what happens. I can't imagine having. Well, also part of it is that um, they have high metabolisms, so they're hungry all the time. And um, so any good mother would actually be carrying snacks around with them at all times, whether it be the little fishies, the goldfish, or whether it be um, some Nilla wafers, or whether it's going to be um, like some dried fruit or some nuts, you know, just like y you're going to have snacks out at all times when you have kids um, because they have high metabolisms, they're running around a lot. And like, what kind of irresponsible mom is like, I'm gonna plop you on the couch so you can watch a movie while I'm apparently too tired to be awake in the morning? The morning? The morning? Are you for real? The mom that wouldn't allow me to explore and like find myself or figure out what this world is when you're like four years old you don't know anything man you're just you're you, when you're hungry you just eat you know you just yeah. do what your body wants you to do you got to explore and figure things out it really puts into perspective how controlling she is and basically didn't let her children do anything it seems like it seems like they were constantly having to abide by these rules and if they didn't they would be punished <laughs> aka abused there's another one where it says taking away christmas from her children for not living in truth i'm scared to share this because well you already know this oh, is going to be an uh, interesting one when she starts out saying i'm scared to share this knowing people these days i don't know if people are gonna you know how they're gonna respond um so Kevin and I, we have two, well, we have six children. The two youngest are showing long patterns of selfishness. They have been showing wow. um, through their choices, their unwillingness to repent, their unwillingness to feel sorrow over. I can't imagine why your kids might have like some mental delays, considering that you've been exploiting them for your fucking YouTube channel for years right like that couldn't possibly mess with their psyche right some pretty egregious choices that they've made 
Um, I would love to hear these choices, by the way. So, Kevin and I have decided that we are going to give the gift of truth to them this year for Christmas. We are going to give them the gift of boundaries, and we're going to give them the gift of repentance. The gifts of truth. So, so we sat down with them, and we we told these two um, what our expectations were, again, and we let them know how deeply sorrowful we've been because of the choices that they've been making and how it's affected their teachers at school. It's affected their peers. It's affected um, our home, the siblings. Um, and we just laid it out very clear. And we told them that this year they are not going to be visited by Santa. So they will and can you imagine not getting christmas because you were being normal a child right a kid having fun well and on top of it i mean like any normal family would um even if you were going to try and like implement that as a discipline which is a pretty fucked up thing to do to your kids generally the way christmas is supposed to work is that you have all the gifts from everybody else, mom, dad, you know, aunts, uncles, family, friends, whatever, right? And then you have an unwrapped gift that's supposed to be like homemade that comes from Santa. At least that's how the tradition is supposed to work. Not everybody really does it that way. But um, the, the unwrapped gift is the you know, like a rocking horse or, you know, whatever, you know, like some, something that's like maybe handcrafted that is supposed to come from Santa's workshop. The thing is that, um, first of all, you know, some parents really fuck this up. You don't do that to your kids because kids are supposed to make mistakes. That's how they learn. That's how they grow. And yeah, I had, I had the same sort of situation where, um, I got coal in my stocking. That's not cool to do to your kids. It's not cool to do to your kids. Cause there is nothing I did as a child that was bad enough to deserve coal. And, um, the fact that they took away all of Christmas while she's making millions of dollars exploiting her kids. She's probably not setting up trust funds for these kids. Who have their lives exposed on YouTube. Wow. Doing what you're supposed to do. Exploring. Huh. It just... Uh, it makes me so angry. Imagine the trauma of not getting Christmas that year too. I remember when I learned... Spoiler alert, by the way, that Santa Claus isn't real. And that memory stuck with me from when I was like eight years old. And it, it was a little traumatic for me. I was sad. I was sad that I figured that out when my brother exposed it for me. But that could possibly be a core memory for these kids, 100% not getting Christmas yeah. that year. Because stuff like that when you're a kid, it matters. It matters a lot. Especially for it being for what is probably a very small reason them getting Christmas taken away. Right. Because according to Ruby's standards, you could literally walk on the carpet with your shoes on and she'll take Christmas away. We prepped them. We, we let them know that the Christmas morning, their four older siblings will be getting Christmas presents to open oh and God. that they will have the gift of love from their dad and I. Wow. Because we want them to really have a visceral experience that hits them. So up until now, I was really hoping that like keeping them home. What a horribly emotionally abusive person that she would do this. You know, um, I know lots of families that mistreat one child or two children um, in a situation because they have some sort of, maybe it's a mixed family, you've got like a stepmom, a stepdad, whatnot, and uh, they just don't feel the same love for their kids. Um, 
it's horrible. It's fucking horrible to, to watch how, I mean, these are her own children. This isn't even like a, a stepfather, stepmother situation. These are her actual came out of the womb children. And she's doing this bullshit to them. The youngest, the two youngest. Oh my God. From school and wiping the floorboards would like really bring pain. Like, like, oh my gosh, I really want to change this behavior. Instead of these kids going to school, she would rather them stay home and do chores. And it sounds like painful chores, like painstaking chores that are, she's probably going to make, make them do for hours. Behavior that I've been exhibiting. <clears throat> and it didn't. It didn't, they, like, it wasn't painful for them. They're like, oh, yeah, we get to stay home from school and clean floorboards. This is kind of fun. It's like, ah, so. Well, I guess the pain of going to school is worse than staying home and cleaning floorboards. But I bet these kids have had to cultivate some kind of coping mechanism to deal with everything that Ruby throws at them. Because there's no way they're experiencing, like, normal things that normal children are experiencing when it comes to the punishments and chores that they're having to, to do like this is extreme stuff you know they've had these visceral experiences uh you know and they haven't they haven't affected them it's because they're so numb and so the more numb your child is the greater experience the big the bigger the outcome they need to wake them up <laughs> you're, you're oh my god so she's saying that the numb, the more numb your child is, the more. She also is giving the indication that she spanks. That's why she slapped her hands together. She's giving the indicator that she spanks her kids. Pain you basically have to inflict on them. How scary is that? You're not going to push a boulder with just your hands. You need some real leverage. And the biggest leverage that a little child has is probably santa claus and so i i expressed to them that i love your soul more than anything in this world and i literally would do anything to to invite you into repentance and i know parents say that i'll do i would do anything for my kid but really what i think most parents are saying is i would give anything to you if I, I would pay any price monetarily. I don't know how many parents are actually willing to put any boundary in place that would. You know, honestly, um, every street in my neighborhood when I was growing up had a Mormon family. And not a one of them treated their kids like this. They were some of the coolest families in our neighborhood. They had the best slumber parties. I remember watching um, my neighbor, um, the the one that was closest to my age. I can't remember her name now, but she she was in the Mormon house because they they were constantly uh, every time the house sold, it was sold between Mormon families because I guess they used their own realtor network. Um, I remember her. Um, dropping like a carton of milk in the driveway when they were trying to get some groceries into the house and she immediately started crying she's she's so sad that she fucked this up she fucked this up she dropped the milk she spilled the milk don't cry over spilled milk right and that's exactly what her mom told her it's okay we're gonna be fine I can get more milk. It's going to be okay. It was a mistake. You're going to be fine. Just come on inside. Bring a turnaround. That would really bring repentance. So that is our gift. Our gift is a reflection of truth to our child. Of This is how selfish you have shown up. And it's not like once or twice. It's not one week. If this is like months and months and months and months and months you have shown up this selfish and so mm -hmm. i'm going to reflect truth to you equally which is about the equivalent of santa not coming
I can't imagine the psychological torture those children must have felt not getting Christmas that year over a mistake that was probably so small that it doesn't even really matter. But then that's going to affect them all throughout their life. They're going to have to go to therapy and try to get over these traumas that they're going to have from this. Ruby's whole way of thinking is just like, it's hard to watch. It's just hard to watch her talk about all this stuff because what kind of person thinks like this you know it's like you don't think these people exist until you see them and then it's like oh my god they do exist all right we have one that says eating disorder advice doing she just knows she's getting a hit by not eating and she's getting a hit by lying about it and and you are so easily fooled that you go along with it so what you need to do is get big and say uh-uh no, I know exactly what's going on here. I will not be lied to. And then her world needs to get really, really small. I don't know if she's involved in a friend group. I don't know if she's part of um, um, any, it, you said she's not part of sports. I don't know if she's part of any extracurricular group. I don't know if she's doing after school things. I don't know what she's involved in, but you need to know more about where your daughter is. You need to know who she's around. You need to know what other influences are coming into her life. I would get her off of the smartphone, off of the phone, off of the internet, because all of those are sources that endorse and enable and um, encourage the lack of eating. They are sources of distortion and lust. Your daughter is being very controlling. This is a control issue. She's trying to control her identity. She's trying to control her pain. She's trying to control her, her, who she is. She's so lost and that would cause pain that she's doing. She just knows she's getting a hit by not eating and she's getting a hit by lying about it. And, and you are so. So in that video, it looks like she was addressing somebody that had a daughter that had eating issues. And her suggestion was like, basically, you need to control your daughter at all times. I don't think that's the answer to that. I'm not a doctor or anything, but. Yeah, seriously, like if you suspect that your child has an eating disorder, you take them to a therapist. Like, you don't. Uh... She obviously has various issues where she doesn't feel like she does have control. She's trying to grow into her own body. She's trying to, like, get into the world. And um, she feels like she's being over-supervised, maybe. Or maybe she's getting some sort of pressures um, to have a certain body image. Um, but that's when you start taking them to therapy and letting them get that out and talk it through and figure out how to deal with it because obviously you are not an expert you're not the expert here wow you can't just control somebody that people will will rebel and they'll want to do what they want to do especially children teenagers here's one that says ruby talking about her kids not being allowed personal space and everything in, is hers in this home you don't get personal space because this is my space because wow. no in this home you don't get personal space because this is my space because i'm the parent if you want your own personal space you'll need to get your own space this is mine and as long as you're living in my home, it is my job to know. Can you imagine a home where it doesn't even feel like home? I imagine that's what it felt like for these kids living there. Well, yeah. Scared all the time. You know everything about you. You don't. Yeah, because like she was removing the doors and making her teenage son sleep on a bean bag. I mean, um, she wasn't giving them like private areas where they could just be themselves and like you can't you can't do that to your kids you know you can't be on top of them all the time like that that's that's not cool like you do have to give them some privacy because especially like once they start reaching puberty and shit 
they're going to want to start exploring their own bodies. It's a sneak. You don't get to hide. You don't get to have secrets. Not in my house. Do you see how loving that is? Now, if you're in distortion, you're reeling right now. If you're in distortion, you're, you're, you're ready to, you're ready to pull your hair out right now. You're ready to scream. So think about how that. I hate how it seems like she gets energy from this, like her ego is being inflated because maybe this is like her only source of area where she's ever felt any type of control or power or something. And, it, or maybe it's just really just showing how evil she is. And this is just her opportunity saying if the boys don't stop messing around, she's going to take away their privilege to eat dinner. Torturing him. Stop it. I know you're not, but it looks like you are. Take hey, Russell. <laughs> I'm only going to say it one more time, and then you're going to lose the privilege to eat dinner. I think we all know what it's like to be hungry and to be starving. It's it's one of the worst feelings ever. And to use it as a punishment towards your kids. Well, that right there is why, why didn't CPS step in there? You can't um, starve your kids. Can't do that. You know, um, I don't care what they did during the day they still get meals you still have a responsibility of actually feeding your kids i understand if you're like hey you got to eat that squash on your plate um but you know after a certain amount of time if they're still not going to eat it then just be like you know what all right let's give you some oatmeal or something because you got to eat something you're going to eat something, um, and uh, whether or not this is something that you will not eat, in this case, um, okay, I'm, I'm going to mentally note this and not cook it for you again, right? It's not a good thing to be doing. Like, they were just sitting there rolling around on the floor having fun, but Ruby wouldn't even allow that. They're just being kids, doing yeah. what kids do. Talking about taking Chad's bed away. My bedroom was taken away for seven months, and then you give it back, like, a couple weeks ago. Seven months? Yeah. And look at her smiling, dude. Oh, my God. I don't think our viewers know that. <laughs> she's laughing about it and she's like saying i don't think our viewers know about that like she's saying uh shut up quit talking about this sleeping on a beanbag i'm sleeping on a beanbag <laughs> so you're telling me he was sleeping on a beanbag for that long and probably not even the whole time he probably had to sleep on the floor some what kind of parent takes the bed away and look at her she thinks it's funny Ugh. Blows my mind. I gave him my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. He doesn't even really know. But at least this is the reason that's in my head. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I think it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at two in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase and then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, he was like, what? And he's all happy as a sunglass. So he played a practical joke on his brother and she took away this teenager's kit, his bedroom, for seven months. For seven months. For playing a practical joke on his brother. This is on. Do you think it's funny? Because and then I walk out. And... If you think it's funny, then you. That was seven months ago. Maybe you need longer without a bedroom. Oh my god. It was not. Wow. So these kids just being kids, doing what kids do, brothers do, and then she's threatening him again. She's going to take away his bed longer. I think I finally found one thing that Ruby, Frankie, and I agree on. Yeah, I know I'm as shocked as you are, but check out what her latest connections video just revealed. I was a hugely disconnected, selfish, aggressive, neglectful mother. Entitled. Entitled. And it's funny because she still is. The title to this one says just because her daughter didn't want to get out of bed. One of the fastest ways to stop enabling it is to kick her out. 
because then you don't have to deal with it at all. She can go be angry on the street corner. But my guess is because you're so angry, wow. you wouldn't do that. But you can do that, and I would encourage you to do that. Wow. If she's got enough anger to bark and bite at you, she's not too sick. People who are really sick with cardiac issues, they don't behave like that. They start humbling like, oh my gosh, I could die. Or I may not have a place to live. I can't go to work. I've got to take care of my body. And they humble. This young woman doesn't seem too alarmed about her physiological issues. So when you say, how do I live in truth? I've just given you numerous examples of what you can do. Are you willing? Or are you going to tell me that that's not realistic? It is realistic. It's just that you're not. No, I'm going to tell you it's abusive. You don't do that to your kids. If your kids are struggling with depression, you, you put them in therapy. What the fuck even? Willing to have the outcomes. You don't want her to have those outcomes because you don't want those outcomes. So I don't know what else to tell you because anything shy of you not kicking her out of the house <laughs> oh my is not God. going to help this young woman because she doesn't feel anything. Yeah, kicking them out. That's the only way you can do this. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah, apparently kicking out your children is the only answer to anything. Anytime they do anything wrong, you know, just kick them out. Just kick them out. That'll handle everything. Then you don't have to deal with them anymore because they won't be there. Sure, you won't get to love them or raise them or take care of them and have them take care of you when you get older and have them in your life. But, hey, at least, you know, you kick them out and they'll learn their lesson. This is the dumbest advice I've ever heard. And I feel sorry for anyone that actually listened to this. Now, I don't know if you're paying for therapy. If you're paying for therapy, I'd say I'm stopping. I'm not paying for therapy. I don't know what 21 year old can afford to go to therapy. So that's something else you could do. But you can keep your child on your health plan up until age 25. So I don't know what this bitch is talking about. She probably doesn't have to actually work for a living. She's probably like a stay-at-home mom who's just getting paid for by the husband. And she doesn't um, know what it is to actually go out and earn a living, right? And actually have to pay for her own existence. That's my guess. I, I'm making an assumption here. But um, as a single mom who had to do it all, this is fucking ridiculous advice. Don't go into the therapist and say, she's being mean and she needs to be nice. You sound like a two-year-old. Don't do that. You don't get to control what she says in therapy, but you can say, I'm done paying for it. Wow. I don't know if she's being reinforced no, by our therapist. No, I don't know. I hope. No, actually, you can't. You can't. If it's a minor child, you can't say, I'm going to just stop paying for it. If it's your minor child, you have to pay. You have to feed them. You have to clothe them. You have to give them lodging. And you have to make sure that they get educated. You are a crazy bitch if you're telling people to kick their teenagers out onto the streets. She's not, but she could be. Because therapists across the board are quite enabling. It's funny that she says that because she is, uh, in a way, a therapist. She's a counselor. She's a marriage counselor. She's a parenting counselor. Oh my God. And so she knows. <laughs> she definitely knows. And my kids are literally starving. I hesitate to say this because it's going to sound like I'm like a mean barbarian. But I told the kids, I said, I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast <laughs> until you get your chores done. If it makes me so angry when she laughs during this i can't stand how she is laughing about it of <laughs> sounds like when you see someone hurting you acknowledge the hurt if your kid came to you on fire would you say i'm so glad you trusted me to tell me you're on fire but if i put out the fire that's going to really hurt and you're going to end up with scabs anyway so i'm just going to love you where you are right now no you you throw them on the ground and you start rolling them. You get a blanket and you start hitting the flames. And they're going to say, you're hurting me. You're, you're beating me. You're controlling. It's like, 
I think if somebody's on fire, they're not going to say you're hurting me, you're beating me. They're going to be like, help. No, but this is the second time in your video that she's indicated that she spanks her kids. Oh, like, get this fire, help. I, I'm... No, dear, hold still. I'm getting the fire out. That's what a loving parent does. And because nobody will do it, it looks to the world crazy. And because they've never been loved before, it looks like I'm angry. To them, it looks like I'm controlling. Wait a minute. They've never been loved before? These are your kids. What are you talking about? You're saying they've never been loved before? These are your kids. Oh my god. It looks like I'm militant. It looks like you are. I'm a monster. You are. It looks like I'm you are. It looks like I'm full of hate. It looks you like are. I'm not accepting it. Because they don't know you what are. love looks like. Okay. What sounds I don't think she knows what love looks like. Like. This is what love sounds like. Uh, you see someone hurting. Uh, you acknowledge the hurt. If well, that's a big yikes. So if you don't want to have a baby then do not use your agency to engage in sexual contact. Now, I know that nobody talks about that anymore. Like, nobody. Nobody. I don't hear that from anyone. Like, ab this, where, this is where she goes into an abstinence ra um, They don't want to teach kids about um, contraception and birth control um and std testing and um like they they don't want to teach their kids about this they just want them to be um virgins for the rest of their lives until they meet the perfect person who's going to marry them right abstinence abstinence that used to be around when i was a kid abstinence but nobody says that anymore because everybody feels like they have a... First of all, I don't think she speaks for everyone. I'm sure there are many people out there that practice this. Just because she doesn't hear about it doesn't mean that nobody's not practicing it. Like, what? ...have a right to just do whatever they want. And then they have these, these consequences, these outcomes of STDs or pregnancy or, or you know, rape. And they... they they don't so she wants to victim blame she wants to blame people who get raped um for the facts that they just are out there living life right date rape rape in the street whatever it is um i know that they I, obviously i don't monetize any of my videos so I, i'm not too scared that youtube's gonna be like oh no you can't monetize this video because you said the R word. Um, she's victim blaming at this point. And quite frankly, looking at her, she probably doesn't have this issue. She doesn't have the issue of people coming on to her and, you know, trying to make moves and stuff like that. Like, that's not going to be a problem for her. I don't think. I don't want to take any responsibility for their participation in it. Now, when I say rape, what I'm talking about is you engage in a sexual relationship and then you may say, stop. And the person's like, I'm not stopping. I'm going to take what I want. I'm not talking about like someone attacks you and forces you. I'm talking about your participation. And then at some point you say, I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. And, you know, because... The person you're with just says, I don't care what you want, because that's the kind of person you've chosen to hook up with. Mm -hmm. So, mom. Wow, so she's saying that it's not the other person's fault that forced them on you. It's your fault for picking that person. You should have known that they were going to be like this ahead of time. And it's your fault. It's all your fault. What a, what a horrible mindset. What a horrible way to view the world. Like... That belief is so flawed. Yeah, it's so it's very patriarchal. It's very misogynistic. It's a whole, um, uh, you know, the rest of us, I think, like normal people, know that no means no, right? But apparently this bitch doesn't know that no means no. 
a, a hot tub in my backyard and because it's in my home and it's on my property and I paid for it, it's under my jurisdiction. I have stewardship over that hot tub. And so I get to decide the types of bathing suits people wear when they're oh in God, that hot tub. I don't get to go to the city pool and decide that. I don't get to walk around and say, um, that's not appropriate. I don't want that swimming suit. I don't get to do that because it's public property. It's a public pool. I do get to decide what comes into my home. And I have decided there's no bikinis. And so if someone comes over with a bikini, they are invited to put on something else or to leave. Basically, she's saying you can't be normal. If you come over to my house, you're not allowed to be normal. And by the way, I'm a control freak. So I'm going to control every aspect I can of your entire life yeah. when you're in my home. This is my home. I'll be honest, it's hard watching these. This one says Chad's unsafe bed that he slept in since he was six until 14. This board is about to snap in half. So <laughs> I'm just going to start over. Chad's been complaining for a while now that he doesn't feel safe on his bed. Is this why you took his bedroom away for seven months? Because you didn't want to go to fucking Ikea and just buy him a new platform bed? Oh my god, bitch. You make like a million dollars a year from your YouTube channel and you can't get this poor kid a new bed? Oh my god. Uh, the, the bed feels like it's going... He's like, Mom, every time I get on my bed, it feels like I'm going to break through the bed. And I'm like, oh, it's fine. But if this was her bed, I guarantee she would have got that fixed ASAP. It's okay. funny how she doesn't want to take responsibility of the kids and make their lunches or take care of them properly. But when it comes to her, she'll take care of herself and she'll do all these things for herself. But if a bed's broken and it's not her bed, she don't care. Whatever. It's not yeah. my problem. Seriously, she needs naps in the, like, the morning. She needs naps in the morning? What is she doing at night? That she needs naps in the morning. You're an independent 14-year-old. Uh, you can do it yourself. Go out, get a job. Yeah, at 14, go get a job and make enough money to buy you a new bed frame or learn how to fix it, YouTube or something. A parent is supposed to be there to teach the child how to do things. You know, yeah. you help them, you encourage them, you cheer them on, you you be there as a source of love and you know, in inspiration, somebody the child can come to and ask questions. I feel like these children, they don't get any of that. Letting no, her six-year-old go. They don't. They don't. They don't. This is literally a power dynamic. This is a woman who just likes to uh, be the dictator of her family and um, abuse them as much as possible because she feels like cracking the whip is somehow going to um, make them submissive to her. And that's what she's looking for. She is not looking to actually educate them and bring them into adulthood with healthy ideals. Like, this this woman is absolutely crazy and she deserves to be behind bars. Oh, hungry at school and refused to bring lunch when the teacher called and was concerned. I just got a text message uh, from E's teacher and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today, and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children, um, because I know that her teacher is... You're not raising children. You didn't go into the kitchen and help her pack her lunch. You're not raising children. You're torturing children. Uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if i came to the school with lunch um but i i responded and just said eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch so the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry and hopefully hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch I would say, what kind of mom lets their six-year-old go hungry at school and also makes them make their own lunch to take to school? And if they forget it, 
then too bad. I'm not bringing you any food. I would say that, but we already know. About a year ago, my daughter was saying her prayers. Eve, she was six. About a year ago, my daughter was saying her prayers. Eve, she was six years old at the time. And she was saying her prayers and she said the cutest thing. I thought it was so cute. Mm -hmm. And I started laughing. She said, dear Heavenly Father, please help me to survive. And I thought it was so cute and it just took me off. Oh, yes, it's adorable when your six-year-old is in such a bad shape that she's begging for God to save her. That's adorable. It's fucking adorable. Guard, and I kind of get... I hate how she thinks these things are so cute when her children are literally, like, praying to survive. Like, ugh. I won't lie, it was very hard to watch a lot of those videos, but that's a majority of them. And if you want to check out more, there is some more, like, YouTube videos they have in there as well of YouTube creators that have made a lot of content on this. They're in there as well. And some more short videos that I may have missed. The link to that is going to be in the description down below if you want to check it out. If you made it... I'll, I'll, um, I'll drop the link to this video if you want the links to that he's talking about right now.